So one method we're gonna use to apply our paint is just using a roller. So we've re-rolled our tape lines. Uh, we're gonna use for just our game lines, regular two inch, we can use just the two inch roller. So we can go ahead and get that set up here. And you wanna be careful, I always move my pan as close to the line as possible, just in case I drip. Uh, and then we're usually only working with three quarter inch tape. So you do have a little bit of leeway, but you wanna be careful with that. And then I'm just rolling back and forth to make sure I've got good coverage. Some guys will even mount the roller onto a pole, but I find that a little difficult. Um, so I like to be nice and close to the work where I can really kind of see what's going on. It helps me stay in the lines better, um, but I don't do this every time, every day, like a lot of the guys out there. And then whenever I'm putting paint down, whether it's with a roller, with a brush, I'm always going wet into wet. So, you know, I'm starting back here with more paint on my roller and I'm gonna always roll back up into my wet to feather, all right? I don't wanna feather down here and pull something real uh, thin and leave possibly a, uh, a lap mark or something that's gonna show up when I go back and put more paint over it. So again, I'm always starting with new paint in the back, rolling back up into my wet and feathering there. You get on nice dark colors like this green, um, just a single coat, might need two, but uh, I think one's gonna probably do it on here. Using the roller, I think, is a great method for those colors that you know are gonna cover in one or two coats. Uh, it's definitely faster than a brush um, and puts down a, a nice even coat when you've got those darker colors. So now we're gonna move to our bigger roller. And this is again, if we've got a border, we're doing keys, something like that. Um, I can go ahead and use the larger roller, but same, same method, okay? So I'm gonna roll out. And I think with the, the large roller, especially when you're doing those bigger areas, again, just your ability to feather or that you're thinking about feathering uh, definitely helps and comes into play. So once I've got one area kind of done here and I'm moving on to my next one. Now, if I've got some thin areas like that, if I know I'm putting down another coat of paint, I can always make sure I cover everything on the second coat. Otherwise, you may have a small brush or something else you use when uh, you're doing those side areas just to make sure you're getting all your details done too. And I wanna make sure I get enough paint out there, so if, if I need to, because I thought that was a little thin where I kind of came across and I was just trying to wet it out a little bit on this side. So I'm going back and I'm still feathering out into my wet. So I'm still following my wet into wet. And the only caution here is again with a nine inch roller. Usually I've got, again, maybe some two inch tape, but a lot of times you're only gonna have a quarter inch tape again, like I've got along the sides. You just have to be careful because it's easy to let this thing kind of get out of control and get way over your line and now you've painted where you don't want to paint. Um, if that's a problem for you, you might want to have somebody else kind of cut in the sides so you can stay away from them or just be you know, a little more careful when you're by those side areas. So again, I always like to go back and feather back out into where I was, I don't wanna leave any heavy marks out in my floor. So if I go back and feather, I'm just making sure I've taken care of any marks like that. So that's using a roller, two inch roller for your game lines, nine inch roller for borders, keys, larger areas like that.